Hi guys, today we gonna talk about something awesome. But I think you already know it from the thumbnail. Yes, we gonna talk about the new Raspberry Pi Pico. So after dominating the world of single board computers, the Raspberry Pi Foundation is here with their new microcontroller board called Raspberry Pi Pico. So today we will talk about this new board from Raspberry Pi Foundation and we will see if it is any good and for whom it is for. So without wasting any more further time, let's do this. <laughs> So after some time I was able to get my hands on this Pico board which is a microcontroller board from Raspberry Pi. And please don't be confused this board with another Raspberry Pi boards. Because the other boards are single board computers which means they can run a proper operating system and they have a huge computing power. So this guy here is not a single board computer. It is a microcontroller board like an Arduino Uno. So hopefully you got the idea that it is built for mostly smaller projects like blink a LED, drive a motor, run a LCD display and such. So I hope you guys got the idea that what this board is meant to do. So let's talk about the important specifications of this board. This board has a RP2040 microcontroller and it features dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor which can run up to 133 MHz. It has 264 KB of RAM and 2 MB of flash memory which might be enough for most of the projects. It comes with 26 GPIOs of which 3 are analog and which may not be sufficient in most of the projects. But on the bright side, it supports two URs, two SPIs, two I2Cs and 16 pins supporting PWM, which is definitely something. It features a USB 1.1 controller with host and device support. And it has eight PIOs for adding custom peripherals. The running voltage for this device is 1.8 to 5.5 volt, which is pretty good. And it is a low power consumption board as well. And last but not the least, it has an on chip clock and a temperature sensor on board as well. So these are the important features it has. Now, as we already know that, that there are already very good microcontroller boards in the market. So why go for Raspberry Pi Pico? So let's compare this board with the competitors in the market. So the very first competitor for this board would be a Arduino Uno, Nano, Mini or similar Arduino boards. But Arduino boards are slower than our boy Pico here. And Pico got the brilliant set of GPIOs compared to our Arduinos. And Pico got better memory and even it is a dual core as well. But when it comes to IDE, tutorial and support, since Arduino is there from a long time, they are a better choice in my opinion. And you can get a million project on Arduino on the web and you can learn from those. But the Pico is not left behind. Pi Foundation did a great job creating a proper documentation. So there's that. Now all in all Pico is definitely way better than our Arduinos. 
but I would choose an Arduino for my project if my project is small like blinking up a LED or running up a motor etc. But there are scenarios where I would love to use Pico when we need better set of GPIOs, good onboard memory, a high clock processor or an internal temperature sensor. And most of the Arduinos doesn't support HID by default except Micro and Leonardo. Well, Pico got you covered in that scenario. So I would love to make a keyboard or a game controller with the Pico. Now the next big competitor for this board would be our ESPs. So ESP32 and ESP8266 will give this board a huge competition. Well, ESP8266 is a slower board with less RAM and more flash memory than our Pico. But it has Wi-Fi and that changes a lot. So probably due to Wi-Fi many people will go with ESP8266 than Pico. And talking about ESP32. So yes, ESP32 beats Pico in most of the scenarios. And ESP32 has a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And it is clocked higher and comes with more memory, supports I2S, CAN, which makes ESP32 better device than Pico. But the USB 1.1 host and device support and HID support gives Pico more edge. And to be honest, in most of our projects, we usually don't use features like high clock speed or more memory etc. So in those scenarios, Pico will be as good as ESPs. But it's gonna hurt a lot when the projects will need a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity. So the lack of Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in 2021 could be the downfall of Pico. Now last but not the least, our STM32 boards, Blue Pill and Black Pill are also seem like a good competitor for these boards because they seem like Pico. They also don't have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And they are also clocked higher than regular Arduinos and share similar set of features while Pico got more memory but on the other side STM32s got I2S and CAN. They both have onboard clock and temperature sensor. So in my opinion both got their own edge. But they are similar in nature for most of the project scenarios. But since Pico is new and have better documentation and support I think my pick would be Pico over a STM32 because of simplicity and documentation. So that brings us to the conclusion part. And here are my brief thoughts about this board. The Pico is a feature packed board and it is definitely way better than other boards out there. Except ESPs. Since they got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth so they have a advantage. And ESP32 is indeed more powerful than Pico. So if I have to choose between ESP32 or Pico, I will go for ESP32 because ESP32 is more powerful. And talking about the STM32 boards, well I will go for Pico than STM32. And then there are two scenarios where I would love to use Pico. The first scenario will be, since it supports HID by default, I am gonna use Pico for HID projects like custom keyboard or gamepad. For HID projects, Pico would be a better choice than other boards out there. And the second scenario would be, since power consumption of this board is low and it has an onboard bug boost converter, which allows this board to accept even low voltages as 1.8 volt, which makes it ideal to use with smaller or compact batteries. So we can make smaller projects like some variables with it. So internal temperature sensor and buck boost converter on board and by default HID support is the reason I bought this device. But I hate the fact that there is no EEP ROM on this and there is no reset button as well. But as this board came out in 2021, they should have added a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth chip on the board. And in future, if any revision of Pico comes, I hope that it will come with onboard Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So guys, that's all for today. I will come back with some projects on Pico. So please let me know in comment section that what do you think of this board. And guess which project I am gonna do on Pico next.
So I hope you like this video. If you do, hit like, give me a share and don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys in another video of mine. Till then, keep exploring.